Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. The 14th Bahrain Summer Festival Golden Edition opened its doors to the public, celebrating outstanding Bahraini achievements. The Bahrain Culture and Antiquities Authority, BACA President, Sheikh Hamey bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, welcomed the visitors and highlighted the festival's programs and activities. She said that the festival's events and workshops are coordinated by different initiatives and embassies. The workshops feature a dynamic range of themes and encompass different cultural and sustainable activities, cooking, painting, crafting, and many more. The celebration offers educational and entertaining programs suitable for all ages. Visitors can participate and attend the Bahrain Summer Festival's different activities and performances on July 11th to the 31st from the 5 to 9 p.m. at the Bahrain National Museum, the Art Center, and the Cultural Hall. In line with Decree No. 3 of 2013 regarding a ban on afternoon work in open spaces throughout Bahrain from noon until 4 p.m. throughout July and August and within the directions of the Ministry of Labor to enhance the preventive role in the field of occupational safety and health, the Ministry held a workshop entitled Work Ban and Disease Prevention for the Year 2022. With the participation of a number of safety supervisors, the workshop comes within the context of supporting the efforts made to ensure optimal application by establishments and workers of the controlled procedures and raising awareness of labor protection, especially in summer. It will review practices and practical and safe ways to prevent summer diseases in various work sites. The workshop aims to protect the workforce from accidents and injuries in light of the rise of temperature and humidity levels that the Kingdom of Bahrain is witnessing during this period of the year. The event comes as part of a series of meetings organized by the Ministry of Labor to promote preventive awareness of occupational safety and health and to find out the latest developments in this regard and the need to promote occupational safety principles among both employers and workers. Hajj pilgrims easily completed the pebble stoning of the three Jamrats today, the second day of Tashriq, a two to three day stay in Mina Valley, starting with Al Jamra Al Sughra, followed by Al Wusta, and finally Al Aqab Al Kubra, amid careful organization from all relevant sectors in order to maintain their safety. Pilgrims who opt to discontinue stone throwing for the third day, which falls tomorrow, are allowed, as per pardon of the Holy Quran, to leave the Jamrat area and head for Mecca downtown to make the farewell tawaf around Kaaba. Muslim leaders from across the world congratulated the Saudi leadership on the success of this year's Hajj as the annual pilgrimage comes to a close. Gulf leaders expressed their sincere congratulations on the great success and careful organization of this year's pilgrimage. Congratulations were delivered to the Saudi leadership by the Muslim World League Secretary General, the OIC Secretary General, President of the Arab Parliament and the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar Al-Sharif, who noted the success of this year's Hajj. In separate messages, the Muslim leaders cited the excellent services extended to pilgrims by the Saudi government, the private sector and the Saudi people, despite COVID-19 pandemic risks. The UN Special Envoy for Yemen said he plans to explore the possibility of a longer and expanded truce with the country's warring parties in the coming weeks. Hans Grunberg didn't provide details of the length of expansion he is seeking ahead of the August 2nd expiration of the current two-month truce extension. He told the UN Secu Security Council that the renewing the truce would provide time and the opportunity to start serious discussions on Yemen's economy and security. The ceasefire between Yemen's internationally recognized government and Iran-backed Houthi militia initially took effect April 2nd and extended until June 2nd. Though each side at times accused the other of violating the truce, it was the first nationwide halt in fighting in the past six years of the conflict. A Saudi-backed demining program cleared 838 mines planted by the Houthi militia in various regions of Yemen during the first week of July. The King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center's KS Relief Mesam demining project removed six anti-personal mines, 349 anti-attack tank mines and 483 unexploded ordnance. The total number of mines demolished since the start of the Mesam project is 349,721. The project launched in 2018 aims to remove mines planted by the Houthi militia throughout Yemen, which frequently kill children, women and the elderly. 
The United Nations Security Council voted to allow UN aid deliveries to continue until January 10th to some 4 million people in northwest Syria from Turkey. This came after a deal was reached on its third attempt after the mandate for the operation expired. The United States, Britain and France abstained from the vote because they wanted to extend the long-running humanitarian aid operation for one year. Russia vetoed that move in a vote on Friday and then failed in its own push for a six-month renewal. The mandate for the aid operation expired on Sunday. When the Bab al-Hawa crossing reopens on Wednesday, it will continue to allow civilians and non-UN relief convoys to cross, including those sent by Turkish aid groups and other international aid organizations. Underwater gardeners in Denmark are hand-planting new carbon-capturing eelgrass meadows to help restore a degraded fjord. Scientists say that the country has lost an estimated 80 to 90 percent of one slush eelgrass beds that grew along its shores and fjords. It is part of a five-year project run by the University of Southern Denmark to restore the busy waterways, one slush eelgrass beds and the wildlife that once thrived among them. Divers take surviving grass from remaining beds, then on shore volunteers wrap individual shoots around a degradable iron nail so that divers can easily pin them to the seafloor. It's claimed to be the first project of its kind in Denmark. The more than 70 species of seagrasses are among the most poorly protected but widespread coastal habitats. They are found along coastlines around the world except Antarctica's.